presentation, I hope to provide some insight into the challenges children living in conflict zones face in the midst of an epidemic. This is based on research World Vision conducted during the height of the Ebola epidemic in the Democratic Republic of Congo last year, and similar multi-country research we are undertaking in collaboration with War Child on COVID-19 in conflict-affected contexts. Before I begin, I would like to pay tribute to my colleague, Abdu Kamaru, a wonderful person and an expert in monitoring, evaluation and learning, who led the research team in North Kivu last year. Sadly, Abdu passed away earlier this year and he will be greatly missed. Children living in conflict zones already face significant challenges to their protection, education and well-being. When these areas are additionally affected by health epidemics like Ebola and COVID-19, World Vision research has shown that the impacts and protection risks are exponentially compounded and must therefore be addressed in a holistic, conflict-sensitive manner. I would like to share a few thoughts on the process we are using to embed a conflict-sensitive approach to advocacy and programming during epidemics. Firstly, research with children and adults to identify previous and current concerns and the changes occurring since the epidemic outbreak. The assessment process should focus on what children themselves are feeling and seeing through focus groups where feasible and interviews with girls and boys, both directly affected by the epidemic, having become ill themselves or had a caregiver who became ill and those who have not been directly affected. Important considerations in this process include balancing safeguarding and empowerment of children, testing questions to eliminate assumptions and biases of the research team, and training of researchers to ensure comparable findings across areas whilst taking into consideration the specific needs of the context. The next step, the analysis of the findings should identify child-led priorities for integration into programming and advocacy. The process needs to be able to balance ease of analysis with the depth of information that can be gathered. And it goes without saying that the analysis should identify commonalities for children affected by conflict and epidemics, as well as specific needs of children in each location. And finally, using the outcomes of the research to ensure the global advocacy approach highlights the specific considerations in conflict prone zones and an adaptable approach to programming to embed the specific needs of children affected by armed conflict. The confluence of conflict paired with Ebola had a devastating impact on the affected children, families and communities in the DRC. The additional stressors of an epidemic are multiplying, not just adding to, the physical, social and psychological impacts on children living in zones prone to conflict and increasing the risks they face. The Ebola outbreak in DRC further compounded an already fragile context, increasing the burden on communities and making the epidemic more difficult to address. To highlight a few of the ways this played out during Ebola in the DRC, children we interviewed expressed the loss of things that could offer some sense of stability in their lives, access to school, social relationships and family. Conflict already interfered with these, but Ebola further entrenched these challenges. They were asking for their basic needs to be met, security, food and education. Children also spoke of the isolation they felt with the closures of community spaces and schools and the loss of day-to-day -day activities. No more playing sports, doing homework with friends, or attending church events. Not being able to shake hands or embrace others in order to avoid the spread of Ebola felt like a loss of their culture to them. Children reported high levels of psychological distress not just because of Ebola, but also because of the security situation, with a pervasive fear that the militias would return and families would need to flee once again, with the question, how could they do that in the middle of an epidemic? 
They talked of insecurity as a way of life, of armed groups, guns, and fear of being forcibly taken from their families and recruited to fight. Children interviewed also spoke of fears that had already become persistent throughout their lives, fear of loss, death, and abandonment. They overwhelmingly called for peace and an end to Ebola and for support with their mental well-being. And finally, they called for awareness raising among children, family members, and the community to end the stigma faced by children affected by Ebola. So how to embed a conflict sensitive approach to child protection during an epidemic? Firstly, it's important to create space for children in conflict settings to articulate their fears and concerns in the face of an additional epidemic related crisis. While care must be given to ensure it is done safely and ethically, children are the best source for understanding their concerns and what their most pressing needs are. A protection sensitive response includes ensuring a, a strong protective environment for children to tackle the root causes of violence and unhealthy stress and provide support for those affected. Investing long term into building strong and resilient child protection, health and education systems to respond better to future outbreaks of disease and armed conflict must be a priority now to minimize the long term impacts on the well being of children in conflict and epidemic affected countries. It is equally important to ensure existing work to support children affected by armed conflict does not stop. For example, children who have been separated from armed groups are survivors of sexual violence or other forms of exploitation and abuse. Their needs will only increase with the epidemic and delaying support risks creating a lost generation. Suspension of mental health and psychosocial support is particularly concerning and the support needs of the wider population of children must also be prioritized. And finally, whether you focus on programming or advocacy, it is also important to speak out so that children in conflict prone areas are not left behind. Thank you.